just nice. It is just nice. So we are there in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Now, the message is, we are his workmanship. And I want to believe that as revival comes, we are going to be part and parcel of it and we'll pray and trust God that, Father, I am sick and tired of the normal things. I'm sick and tired of just having the usual things in my life. That I come, I, you know, I... I just listen to the word of God. I go back home the same way I came in. It is a desire that God is going to touch us. God is going to revive us that our lives may never be the same again. Things will begin to change. Our lives will begin to change. We'll begin to experience transformation in our lives, in our marriages, in our homes, in our businesses, in our workplaces, because the spirit of God will begin to Work in us in Jesus' name. And I want to trust God that he's going to help you and I to be part and parcel of this revival that is coming. That as it begins to sweep, as the spirit of God begins to be poured out upon all flesh, you shall be part of it in Jesus' name. And that God will begin to use you, shall begin to gifts that have been lying dormant in your life will begin to manifest in Jesus' name. Gifts that are, have been deposited in your life because all of you have gifts. That's one thing I was just sensing in my spirit as I was praying. S gifts that have been lying dormant in your life will begin to manifest in Jesus' name. And I believe God is going to begin to work a work in us that will bring glory and honor to him in Jesus' name. You know, I woke up this morning just as I was praying and I was telling God, God, I just need for us to have something different in our lives. In this church, in Jesus' name. You know, Corona did a good thing for me because, you know, I used to uh, love waking up at 3 o'clock, pray for 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. But when the lockdown came and we were shut in our houses, I added one more hour. And it has stuck with me. So I took some time to pray and just tell God, God, we need, we need a change in our lives. For me, God, I'm sick and tired of just having the ordinary taking place. We must have transformation everywhere we go. And I tell God, everywhere I go, even if it's a cold place, I am not going to be cold like that place. I must make it hot in Jesus' name. And can that be the desire of all of us? That when you go to a cold place, you say, you don't say, oh, that place was so cold. The worship was so cold. You are the one to bring the revival. Hallelujah. That when you have an opportunity to stand and speak something, you'll speak something that will begin to... Activate something in the hearts of the people. Not, not to begin to criticize them, but you people are too cold, you are so... No, 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 no. You begin to speak something that begins to activate something in their lives. And I believe when God begins to revive you and you say, Me, I'm fire everywhere I go. Even if the place is so cold and people are so dull, I'm not going to be dull like them because... I must do something that brings change in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. I'm calling it, we are God's workmanship. We are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. Ephesians 2, 8, the Bible says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that he being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are uncircumcised by that which is called uncircumcision, in the flesh made by hands, 
that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the, in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. One as face other. Now, one thing you should know, before you got saved, or the Bible says, it's by grace that you have been saved. Not of works. It is not because of your good works that you have been saved. You don't get saved because of good works. You don't get saved because of something you do that is nice before God. Because the Bible says all your works are like filthy rags before him. But he says it's by grace that you have been saved through faith. Period. By grace. God's unmerited favor. Or somebody said God's willingness to work on our own behalf even though we don't deserve it. Grace, we have been saved, not of works. And then the Bible continues to say that now, you know, at some point we were far away from God, but now we have been brought near. Hallelujah. By the blood of Christ. And then the Bible says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now, before you get saved, you don't get saved by works. It is not your works that will get you saved. It is the grace of God by faith. But now, after you get saved, you are God's workmanship now to do good works. Hallelujah. Your default settings are the settings for doing good works. And that means now, whatever you do, once you're born again, it counts. The works that you do will count. And that's why God says, he, you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works and to walk in them. So it is a privilege, it's a blessing when you do good things. Now when you begin to do evil things, it's the choice that you make. When you choose to do the bad things, it is your choice. But the way God has made you, as his workmanship, is that he has made you to do good works. Now, I was checking this word, workmanship. Workmanship, from the dictionary, says the hard work and skill that go into making something or working at a task. That's one meaning. Another one says, quality of handmade object that is skillfully crafted. Okay? Like when you, if you're the one who made this pulpit here, you say, that's my workmanship. Okay? Because it is the quality of the handmade object that is skillfully crafted. You say, that's my workmanship. Now, our brother Adalo has put up windows. If you saw up windows, that is his workmanship. The workmanship of our brother John Adalo. The windows we see. What has face up? And then another one says, something effected, made, or produced. Workmanship. Something that has been effected, made, or produced. Another one says, workmanship, workmanship, by the way, it's a noun, can describe the hard work and skill that go into making something or working at a task. Okay? So you show workmanship when you labor carefully over a project. You show workmanship. Now God has taken his time and he said, we are his workmanship. He has taken time to make you to do good works. Now when you do evil, it's because you are choosing the wrong thing. It is the wrong choice. And that's why I always give an example. At the time of Jesus, when he was being um, crucified, and the governor was asking, today, I'm putting before you. He was trying to help them. 
He says there is this robber called Barabbas. And there is this good man, the king of the Jews, called Jesus, the savior. Now, who do you choose? Who do I release? Now, what did people choose? Say, give us that robber. That one who makes us, our life terrible. The one who steals from us when we pass through a certain path. This one who breaks our houses. We want that one. Now that's how we as believers, when we choose to do evil, we are just like those people. We say we want Barabbas. We don't want Jesus who has been healing our lives, who has been bringing a message of peace and hope. We don't want this Jesus who has been speaking into our lives and bringing a lot of good news from God. We don't want that one. But the Bible tells us that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Hallelujah. So after we are saved, our works count. Because whatever we do on this earth, that will be adding to the books that are there in heaven. Because there's one book called the book of life, which you are, your name was entered the moment you were born again. The moment you got saved. And then there are other books of works. And even the things you said. You know, remember somewhere in the book of uh, Malachi, the Bible says, you know, and the brethren were encouraging one another. And God had them. They were encouraging each other. They were, they were telling each other how, you know, Pastor Nerito, take heart, continue. Pastor, Brother Henry, just take heart. Push on. God is on your side. God will see you. And the Bible says, and God heard them. So there's even a book of the things that God was hearing. The things that were encouraging. Not the discouragements that you give to others. Even discouraging others is a choice. It's a wrong choice that we make. But the way God has crafted us, the way God has made us, is that we do good works. And that means it's such a pleasure. It, sh it should be just like our nature to do good. One as face up. And that's how we are supposed to walk and to do. Somebody said like this. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe to be great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Bonus fear. Because some of us have different roles here in the church. And thank God because our church is still a young church. We have lots of opportunities for people to do things. To do work here. And I'm sure even as you sit there, you can be able to see a work that you can be able to do. You have an opportunity of making the work that you're doing even much better. You can actually do it much better. And you begin to, you know, see how well can I do it? Who else can I include in this team of mine so that we can do this work even better? Have a great work done. Because number one thing is that every work we do is going to be rewarded. Hallelujah. The work that we do for God is going to be rewarded. So there is no, by the way, God is a good employer. Amen. God is a good employer. I was telling my wife, you know, when I leave job, God has already told me he's equally a good employer. Hallelujah. He's a good employer. He also knows how to reward his people here and up there. So it's not only up there, it's also down here. God knows how to reward his people. So, I want to tell you, brethren, let's do great work for God. With such zeal, with such fervency, with such a, a, a passion, because we know we are not doing it for men. You know why people complain when they are doing work is because people don't seem to recognize what they are doing. And you see, when you do things because you want people to recognize, sometimes people will not recognize 
And when they don't recognize, you're going to start losing heart. But if you're doing it because of God, you will do it, whether they see it or not. You will do the work of God because you know you're doing it for God. And I always keep on telling myself, if I go for any meeting, even if I find three people, I'll not preach like as though now I'm discouraged. Where are the people? No, I will preach just the same way I'm preaching right now. And those people will be so encouraged, they will go and bring others. Hallelujah. And I've seen that happening. So I've learned to do everything as unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, the Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might, for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Can you imagine? And then I, I just read a little bit more. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. And then he says, for man knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. Whatsoever your hand find what to do, do it with all your might. Now that's what I'm telling us. We have work here in the house of God. And if you can remember what we have shared with the, okay, the leaders who are here, the real work is here. Work. Ile ingine ni kibarua. Wangapa nanaka kibarua? <laughs> umeandikwa. Eh, umeandikwa ni kibarua. But now the work is actually in the house of God. This one, because the one you are doing right now, you are going to retire. Even though it's written permanent and pensionable. It's not permanent. You are going to retire. The moment you hit... Okay, for government is 60. I don't know for other people is how many years. Even if it's 65. Ukikonga 65, unambiwa bye-bye, thank you for your services. And you're forgotten. But it is important for you to know that the work that lasts forever is the work of God. Because the Bible says this one will, your works follow you. The moment you close your eyes in the grave, in death, your work will follow you. He ingine tutakuwa tunasoma tu. He worked in this place. You know, I remember writing the, I was writing the eology for my sister. I sat and my other brothers told them, give me information. <clears throat> because she was born 1952. Me, I was not there then. So you're the one to give me the information. So I was able to write, went to school here, went to school these years, worked here, worked there, history, finished. But the work of God will continue. The works follow you up to heaven in Jesus' name. So whatever your hands find what to do. And I'm telling you, if you find work to do here, do it with all of your might, with a passion. And with a heart that knows one day God is going to reward me for this. Even if it's in a small way. I remember we, we used to, as, y as young people, we would go early to church and we'd wipe, wipe the seats. We'd wipe the seats. And as we are wiping the seats, we are praying for those seats. God, this seat should not be vacant. Anybody that will come in and sit on this, Lord, we are praying that your blessings, they shall be blessed. If they are not saved, they should be saved in Jesus' name. Well, we are coming early. Nobody was seeing us then. But we would do it with such a passion. And every other Sunday, we would be running to do it. And we would feel nice. Feel encouraged. When we see the church, you know, full and people are seated there, we know. Yes, that's it. We prayed for it. That one. 
That one, that one, the Holy Spirit should fall on that person in Jesus' name. And God did it in Jesus' name. So don't do things because you want to show people. that I'm the one who does this. I'm the one who does this. Uh, these people are not seeing. I am the one who... No, no, no. no. In fact, if we see it, you've gotten your reward. The Bible says like that. If we acknowledge you and we say, ah, that is very good, my brother. You have gotten your reward. So which reward do you want from God? You have gotten yours already. But the one we are seeking for that comes from God transcends those. You know, God can do many things for us. You do a small job here at your place of work. God promotes you. You see, God, me, I cannot promote you. I can only say good work. But you see, God can extend even to your workplace and promote you there. Open an opportunity for you to fly out. God can open opportunities for you, which I cannot as a human being limited. So when we do things for the glory of God, just know that God is a rewarder. He rewards far above what we can imagine or think. In Jesus' name. So he says, whatever your hand finds what to do, do it with all your mind. Because the moment you go to the grave, I'm telling you, brethren, there is no planning. The Bible says you don't need to plan. Have you ever seen people in the grave planning anything? We are planning for so-and-so's wedding. We are planning for, we are planning for the church opening. And they're in the grave. <laughs> there is no planning. There is, no, there is no need of knowledge. There is no wisdom. Even if you are the wisest of the wisest. But the moment you're in the grave and you're quiet, it's, it's finished. And if we go there to the grave to ask you, please, uh, brother, can you help us? What should we do about this? I think some of us, if you, if you find somebody in the grave busy talking to the grave, you'll think this man has gone crazy. I'm at the same time, who you say, and I'm going to be a pagawa and I'm a pep. I'm going to go grieve and I'm going to go to the and I'm going to for advice. But the Bible says in the grave, there is, no, there is no wisdom. You don't need it. There is no knowledge you need. There is no planning that is there. So the planning that we need to do is now. The knowledge we need is now. The wisdom we need is now. Everything that we need to do is now when we still have breath in our nostrils. And I always say like this, you don't despise anybody when they still have breath in their nostrils. As long as they are still breathing, don't despise them. Because one day there will be in a place whereby you will need somebody to introduce you to them. Because of the way you are treating them. You treated them like useless people, trash, and, you know, they will amount to nothing. But one day, and I sing a song, he says, Walio kudarau wata, wata kuesalimia kwa heshima. Oh, by the way, I needed you on this keyboard. <laughs> I needed you on this keyboard. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> so, we are going to pray. And I believe some people here, something that has been lying dormant in their heart will begin to show up in Jesus' name. Because I believe there are people here that God has, has gifts in their lives that are just lying dormant. And you feel that you're wondering, where do I start from here? This is still a young church. And there's all the opportunities for you to do the work of God. And sometimes, you know, you may just be rushing and not knowing that you need to be part and parcel of what God is doing. And that's why we are even organizing for a revival meeting. So that you come and your life is touched, your life is encouraged, your life is built up. So, let's come next Sunday. Also, next Saturday and Sunday. Sunday we shall be having one service. One service. And um, all of us will be in this cathedral in here just to celebrate the goodness of God and have time to be 
touched, our lives to be revived, our lives to be rejuvenated, for us to have a new focus and a new look at what God desires us to do in Jesus' name. Now, I looked at uh, different versions, what it says, about what our hands find what to do. And the American Standard Version was saying, whatever your hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom, ensure where you're going. Amplified says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in the nether world, the place of the dead, where you are going. Okay? There's no activity. There is no activity. So, we have been created to do good works. Brethren, let us do the good works. And where do you do the good works? You begin from the house of God. And you continue right into the estate where you stay. Let the good works be seen. Right even in your workplace, the good works should be seen. In Jesus' name. So that even the day of your burial. You know, Seattle, I wrote the eulogy. And the eulogy will always, we will always look for the good things that the person did. We don't write the bad things. I'm going to show you the eulogy of Mendika Vitubibaya. He did his KCP and he got, uh, which is the last mark? He got E, 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 E. We don't say that. He did his uh, KCSE and he got, uh, the, he got an E. He failed flat. I've not seen that in the eulogy. You will not see it saying, this man was a bank robber. He broke into National Bank and stole two million in 2010. You will not see that. This man broke many homes, families. I've not seen that. But people will look for any good thing that this person did. Whether it is education wise, if they can't find something good he did, they will go back to his education. He did his CPE and he excelled, got 36 points. He did KCSE, he got A. Plus. Went to the university, first class, even though he was a, a, a bank robber. But they will be looking at the good things. The good attributes. This man cared for his family. Because our nature, the way our default settings is that we are supposed to do good works. And therefore, people will always be looking for the good things, good attributes in your life to write about. So may God help us as children of God, that we, it shall, we shall find it within our hearts to seek to do good works because we are his workmanship. Somebody say like this, every time you find work to do, do it the best you can. In the grave there is no work, there is no thinking, no knowledge, and there is no wisdom, and we are all going to the place of death. <laughs> that is a new uh, a version that is uh, which version is this it's um, easy to read version now Acts chapter 9 verse 36 I quickly want to rush us through that one now there, uh, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha which by interpretation is called Dorcas this woman was full of good works and arms did which she did. Verse 37, And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. The Bible says she was, she was full of good works. And I'm just praying and asking God that we, God may help us. That when revival lands in our lives, we shall be good, full of good works. That every person around us will be able to see them in Jesus' name. They shall see this woman 
This man is full of good works. No wonder they prayed for her. When Peter came, they said, this one, please we pray. Let her resurrect. This one should come back. But I don't know, for other people, people will be very happy when you leave. Say it's good readers. This one has been a thorn in the flesh. Bye-bye. Let them go. In fact, I was so sad. This is sad that you know, when I was talking to some of the people there at the, at, after the barrier, they were saying, Kama mungu angeturusu tuchagwe ule kwa kuenda, tungechagwe the husband aende. Kasema, he? Hey. <laughs> I said, this is terrible. This is bad news. Because she was full of good works. This other one. Nikukunyu atu. In fact, he had a bottle. He had a bottle of changa, and I exchanged that bottle of changa with with another bottle of ya, ya, ya So I told my brother, "This one, eno kamwage kwacho tampatia i." And I said, "Ma, mm, i ni changa kweli." So, and I know so. Go ahead. Okay. And I said, I mean, we need to be full of good works. Because that's our default setting. That's how God made us to be. For we are his workmanship. In Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And let's remember that the work we do shall be rewarded. It's not in vain. Now, which are some of the works we can do? Uh, Romans 12, verse 1 to 9. I just want us to quickly go through there. Romans verse 12, 1 to 9. The Bible says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, as living sacrifices, that are holy and pleasing to God. For this is reasonable way for you to worship. I'm reading International Standard Version. Do not be conformed to this world, but, but continuously be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may be able to determine what God's will is, what is proper, pleasing, and perfect. Verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I ask every one of you not to think of yourself more highly than you should think. Rather to think of yourself with sober judgment on the measure, on the measure of faith that God has assigned each of you. For we have many parts in, a, in one body, but these parts do not have the same functions. We have many parts in the body. Now the Bible begins by saying, you know, we give ourselves. We present ourselves. You know, as our bodies as living sacrifices to God, which is pleasing to Him. So we must present ourselves to God, brethren, first. And then... Because that's our reasonable service. And then he says, we should not be conformed to this world. The world standards are, you do things to show. They must know who I am. They must see who I am. They must feel me. They must know I am there. That's the world standard. And if they don't acknowledge me, then they will know that I was there and I will not do anything for them. And then he says, we are parts, the body has many parts. You know, we have got this hand. Do you use this hand for walking? Okay, I know sometimes we have seen people walking with their hands. You know, you turn, unafanya sama, unanza kutembea na migu. But I don't know for how long you will go. 
on your hands. Because that's not the function of the, of the hands. Hands are supposed to have a different function. We have eyes. The body has many parts but with different functions. You could be an eye in the church. You're seeing things. You could be an ear in the church. You're hearing things. You could be a finger. You're doing things. You know, I always tell people, you know, one of the, this is a very small finger, but it's very, very effective. If you want to, to have a strong fist, ukitaku kujua kama ingumi iko, iko nangumi kabisa, this finger has to be there. Did you know that? Just try it. Remove this and you see how, whether you'll have a strong fist. This, this small one is the one that makes your fist feel like mtu ajaribu waone. Okay? So every part has its function. It's got its function. And we must be able to function. Now the Bible says, uh, verse, uh, verse uh, 4, verse 5. In the same way, even though we are many people, we are one body in, in, in the Messiah or in Christ, and individual parts connected to each other. We have different gifts based on the grace that, that was given to us. So if your gift is prophecy, use your gift in proportion to your faith. Verse 7. If your gift is serving, devote yourself to serving others. If it is teaching, devote yourself to teaching others. Verse 8. If it is encouraging, devote yourself to encouraging others. If it is sharing, that is international version. If it is sharing, share generously. If it is leading, lead enthusiastically. If it is helping, help cheerfully. Hallelujah. Now, there are so many things we can do in the house of God. And many uh, times we struggle for the pulpit. So, this is not the only place we can serve God. We serve God out there. You can encourage somebody. Somebody was discouraged and you just go and talk to them. And you find you have spoken a word in season to such a person and they are encouraged. And you have helped a brother. You have helped a sister to come up. And you are able to serve others. I remember another pastor who came here and he says, he just had a brother who, who felt just nice brushing shoes for the pastors and the men of God that were in the house. For him, he, was just, he just loved doing that. And yet he was not a small man. He was working with Brandon Derito who some senior officer. But him, he just loved brushing shoes. I think you saw a clip in WhatsApp. This lady was just washing the church, washing the church. And this brother came and wondered, I've just been seeing you around washing the church. Come, I think I can look for you a job. I can't go to the church. Let me give you my business card. And this sister was so nice. Yeah, that's very good. I, let, let me also give you my business card. Akenda kwa gari yake, itlikuwa ni ile kubwa. The man was saying, is this your car? Yes, this is one of my cars. Akampatia card. Hiya, you are a CEO. <laughs> so when it comes to serving, serve with all of your heart. It doesn't matter your position. It will not reduce you. Bwana sifesan. It will make you it will not make you smaller and because you are sweeping the church or wiping seats. It will not make it will not change you. Bwana sifesan. I mean if you are a CEO and you are wiping the floor, it will not change you being a CEO. It will not change you. It will make it will not make you any smaller. But for you, for others who are looking at you, they might think you're a small person because you're, you're doing small work. 
But you see, the Bible says, says when it comes to serving, serve enthusiastically. And that's, that's how many of the children of God are missing out on the blessings of God. The Bible says, if you are, well, this is somebody saying, if you want something and you have never had it before, you're going to have to do something that you have never done before in order to get it. Okay? You'll have to do that. And there are times I've even entered into the ladies' toilets. There are sometimes I used to come a little bit much earlier. And I would just walk around to see how things are. And uh, I would find the ladies' toilets are not very clean. And I know sometimes the ladies would not take this very kindly. So, I would clean that toilet. And that did not make me... Did it make me uh, uh, not being a pastor? No. It just made me show... It just showed me that I care. I simply care. And I want to serve. I want for people when they come into the house of God, they are happy being in the house of God. One as face up. And it didn't matter that I was believed. I would not have told the pastor, Siwezi kuja kubiru kwa kwenu, sababu najua mimi nina omboleza. Apana. Whether kuomboleza or not kuomboleza, the work of God has to continue. So we serve God in season and out of season. Whether you're feeling good or bad, you just come. I remember the church where we, we were before. I had the bishop, but they were having, we were having a big ceremony where our bishop Mlema was also coming. That, that time I was on the other side. And that morning, I will remember I had a bad stomach ache. In fact, I was telling my wife, my wife was saying, so you just call them, you tell them you're not coming. I said, no, we'll have to go. And I would lie on the bed, the stomach is aching terribly. He says, just relax and let's call them. I said, no, 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 we are going to go. Bonus first son. And we went and I ran the program. Because I knew these guys are depending on me. I'm the one to run the program. Now, how do I start saying, I'm not feeling well, I'm not coming. Program has been set, everything is set. And I went. And by the end of the day, I was well. One has face up. I was happy when I heard the testimony of my brother Henry. When he said, he just said he had to go to the house of God. See, I watched, I watched the clip. <laughs> yeah? So we serve God in season and out of season. So there are giftings that people have. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. Let me read very fast. Therefore, my beloved brethren... Be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 2 Corinthians 15 verse 7. Second, uh, sorry, 2 Chronicles 15 verse 7. Be ye strong therefore and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Hallelujah. Somebody said like this, you can't go back and change the beginning. But you can start where you are and change the ending. So you might have missed out on doing the work of God. You can't change that. But you can start a brand new and begin to do something for God and change the ending. Change the reward at the end. Change things that are going to happen at the end. Change the way things are going to be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody also said, your present circumstances don't determine where you can go. They merely determine where you can start. And that's where you can start. You can start now. You might have been sitting and feeling... Oh, now I don't know where to start. Oh, I, if they don't ask me, I will not do anything. If they don't ask me, I will not do it. 
Maybe you are at, good at playing the keyboard. And you can see our brother Elvis is struggling. He's play, playing some keys that are not there. Key P, key X, key Z. And do you know how to play it? And he said, if they don't ask me, I will not do it. Guys are struggling with uh, things. They are trying to fix things here. And you know how to do it. You just know if I do this, this, it will work. Say, but if they don't ask me, I will not do it. Yes, they will struggle, they will struggle. And somehow by the grace of God, they will manage. And they will have learned. And you will have been left out. So may God help us to start at where we are. We might have failed in the past, but that's not the end. They say failure is never final. But success is never ending. We'll always be having successes after successes. But failure will never be final. The man Edison said, I, I discovered 10,000 ways in which this thing does not work. It's not that I failed. I discovered 10,000 ways in which this thing does not work. The one who discovered the light bulb. He said he tried 10,000 times. But today what do we have now? People have improved on what he tried. Hallelujah. So may God help us. May God help us. In Jesus name. Now I just want to finish with this. Hebrews 10. And verse 24. I feel such a cry in my heart. That there are people here. Who feel yes. I need to serve God. I need to do something for God. I have missed out on doing something for God. I feel there's something in my heart that I need to do for God. I don't even know what it is. Some know this is what I would want to do for God. But you're still there in uh, doubting and wondering, is this really God? Now, Ephesians, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, the Bible says, And let us continue to consider... King James says, to provoke one another, to love and to good works. This one says, let us continue to consider how, that is International Standard Version, how to motivate one another to love and good deeds. To motivate, to provoke one another. Now you see, this brother is good at doing something. We motivate him. So that he does it better. I always love to tell Elvis, you've done well. Continue doing it. You are motivating him. Do it even better. Do it better. So one of the things we need to do for us to do the good works, we need to motivate one another. We need to motivate one another. And then secondly, we need to encourage one another. Ephesians, uh, Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 6. The Bible says, And they helped each one, his neighbor. We need to help one another to be able to do the work of God. We need to help one another in Jesus' name. And then, number three, we need to acknowledge Philemon, Philemon, verse 6. That the communication of your faith may become effectual by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So we need to begin to acknowledge that there are good things that God has put in us. Some of them are laying, lying dormant. There are, nothing is happening. You are sitting on your giftings and the work that you do for God. May God help us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that has gone to your people. I pray in Jesus' name that you may touch our lives. Minister grace to us in the name of Jesus Christ. I just felt in my spirit I need to pray for somebody or some people here who feel that I have work to do for God. I don't know where to begin. 
I don't know even what it is, or some know what it is, and you're saying, I need God to help me to start from now. I've been wondering and wondering and postponing and postponing the work that I would be doing for God. But after hearing this, I need to start from now. You cannot go back to your past, but you can have a brand new beginning that will determine the ending in Jesus' name. If you're there, I just want you to come. Let's pray together. I want to pray with you as we wind up today's service in Jesus' name. Because revival must start with us. It must start with you. You giving yourself, the Bible says, you present your body as a living sacrifice to God, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost, that God may begin to work in you, stirring you up, reminding you of what you need to do, reminding you of what you need to know, that you may arise and begin to do the work of God in Jesus' name. If you're there, I just want you to quickly come. I want us to pray together. I know there are people here. I want you to come quickly. Let's pray. Let me just pray with you that God may begin to stir you up because revival must begin with you. And God must begin to do something new in your life that will glorify his name in Jesus' name. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh, Lord, do something Something new in my life, something new in my life, I pray. I still feel there are some people out there, I don't want you to sit and comfort yourself. Feel I'm, out, I'm okay. God has called you to some work to be done, to some ministry. You have been sitting and postponing and saying I will do I will tell the pastor I will I, I know at the appropriate time I will do it and you have kept on postponing and postponing some of you there is something you know that or you don't even know what it is but you feel so strongly in your heart there is some work that God would want me to do I want to pray to God that he will begin to reveal and unveil it to you in Jesus name that you may become the servant of God that God wants you to be. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you're there, don't continue sitting. Come. I know you're feeling the call and the nudge in your heart. I want you to come. That is a faith. It takes faith for you to do the work of God. It takes faith for you to do the work of God. It takes faith for you to do the work of God. It takes faith to do the work of God. So I want you to come and let's pray together. Let's believe God that is going to do something new in your heart. We'll begin to open up all those sealed gifts in you. I believe I, uh, we can begin to start up the gifts that are within you. The gifts that are within you can be unveiled, opened up in your life. In Jesus' name. Because that's, that's the desire and the heart of God. In Jesus' name. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord, do something new. Do something new in my life, something new in my life, something new in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life, something new in my life, something new in my life. I pray. Just open your mouth and let's pray together. 
Lord, I pray for this sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray that your power and your hand, Lord, shall rest mightily upon her, O God. Let there be a stirring up in her heart in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God come upon her, Lord. You shall begin to do something new in her life. In the name of Jesus, from today the Spirit of God shall come upon you and you shall see the hand of God in Jesus' name. From today the Spirit of God comes upon you and you shall see the hand of God, the grace of God, the power of God at work in your life in the name of Jesus. Let there be an opening up of the giftings and the giftings and the giftings of God in your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the Spirit of God upon her life. In the name of Jesus. The Lord, there shall be a starting up, Lord, in her heart. In the name of Jesus. From today, something opens in your heart. Something opens in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God works. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be a starting up in her heart, Lord, from today. Something new opens in the name of Jesus. Every gifting that Lord is in her heart, Lord, I pray, the Lord it shall open up to the glory of your holy name in the name of Jesus. Lord, something new opening up in your life in Jesus' name. That you shall begin to walk in the works that God purposed you to walk in. The ministry that God set in your life, you shall walk in it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life, something new in my life, oh Lord, do something new in our lives, something new in our lives, something new in our lives, oh Lord. Let us rise up on our feet, let us appreciate the Lord. As we stand up on our feet. Wow. This was a powerful word. In the book of James chapter 4 verse 17. James chapter 4 verse 17. This is the conclusion. James chapter 4 verse 17. Therefore to him that knows to do good and does it not. To him it is a sin. If you know how to do good and you refuse to do good, it is a sin. The man of God has spoken the word which God has laid in his heart so that we may start doing good things. He gave us many examples. And if you continue sitting, you see that we are struggling in this house and you know how to do good. You know that good advice, you keep quiet. The Bible says you do what? Yes, it is not me. It is not the man of God. It is God himself. Praise the Lord. Yeah, he has spoken. And let, it, let us work on it. So that we may see the fruit of what the man of God was talking about. Because our God says that our work of love is not in vain. Praise the Lord. So we are going to pray. That God may touch our hearts. As we go home, may God touch our hearts. Enable us to do good. Good to our, to our neighbors. Good to our environment. Good to this nation. Praise the Lord. Knowing how to do good is also to put on your face mask when you want to approach your neighbor. Praise the Lord. It is kind. Showing kindness to people on the way to your home. It is good to do so. So we will uh, make a short prayer. Then we will share the grace. Hakuna Mungu kama wewe 
Makuna Pupute Hakuna Mungu Kama Wewe Hakuna Pupute Hakuna Mwenye Shara Kubwa Kama Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your servant. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done through him today. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us. Whatever we knew how to do good and we refused to do it in the past, we ask you to forgive us this day. We ask you, Lord, to fill us once again with your presence. We need your power of the Holy Spirit. We are praying that your spirit that overshadowed Mary with your glorious presence may overshadow our going home in the name of Jesus. As we go back to our houses, may your presence overshadow us. May your glorious presence be our shield. May your glorious presence protect us from all evil. As we begin this week, we pray that your presence may protect us and deliver us from those who pursue us. In the name of Jesus, arise, O Lord, and break the powers of the enemy assigned to pull us down. In the name of Jesus, arise, O Lord, and cause your face to shine upon us and meet all our needs according to the riches and glory. We ask, you, Lord, to heal those who are sick in this service today. No one will go back to his house the way he, he or she came in. If there is one, one of us sick, Lord, we ask you to touch and heal. We ask you to touch and restore. In the name of Jesus, bless us, Lord, and go before us and make all the crooked places straight for us during this week. We thank you. We honor your name. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. See you on Saturday. God bless you.